We're going to be wrapping up, I wouldn't even say the series, we've been just talking about the vision of this house and uh, really the, the plan uh, uh, and the purpose for which we've been created and that is to carry a message, um, the message of Jesus, not just, uh, just, not just a pastor, not just a staff. Um, but a people, everyone, everywhere. And we're going to talk a little bit about everywhere uh, in the world today. Uh, Ken Taylor spoke on that last night, or not last night, last Sunday. And, um, and it was so good. And we're going to, I'm going to pick up where he, kind of where he left off today. But before I get into that, I wanted to just take a moment. It's something that seemed to be ro- ro- roaring in my heart a little bit. And that is this uh, celebration. Uh, this sounds really funny, maybe. I'm an analogy guy. I don't know if you know that. Uh, analogies, they just come like on a whim. And um, I had this, this statement pop up in my heart, uh, celebrate the sauce. And you're like, okay, what does that mean? <clears throat> How many of you like Chick-fil-A, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know about you, but like when we go to Chick-fil-A, some of you aren't sauce people. And that, okay, you know. But most people at Chick-fil-A, when you go there, they're going to get Chick-fil-A sauce. Or they're going to get sriracha. Or they're going to get Polynesian. Or they're going to get, help me, what, all of them. Somebody said all of them. All right? Like, there's just this, there's something about, like, the chicken, but then having it with that, right? Um, you can so celebrate the sauce, right? Uh, and so that's what I was thinking about, um, just the idea that, that there's more than just the chicken. But let me just uh, talk, to, talk about it. Maybe this, this picture will, will make better sense to you. When you cook, um, or what, what, you, what do you like to eat? Uh, I like meat and, there we go, meat and potatoes. But I really don't just like meat and potatoes, I like meat with seasoning on it. I like it when it's grilled with seasoning. But then when it comes off, I also like to put a pat of butter on it and let it melt on it. You know, I like potatoes, but I don't just like potatoes. I like potatoes that are mashed when they put milk and butter and salt and pepper, maybe a little sprinkled cheese on there, maybe some bacon bits, maybe some green chives just for looks to make you feel healthy. You know, <laughs> eating the green stuff too. You know, so you like all that stuff, and we have no problem. We don't have an argument. We don't have an argument, and this is what I heard in my heart, is the argument of what is being fed. Instead of celebrating the sauce. Have you ever sat there, and this is not, this is not isolative, but when a message comes out, and maybe you talk about grace, and you say, yeah, but, and, or, well, that's not, Can I tell you it's important that we recognize um, when Jesus fed, he didn't just feed meat or just potatoes, that it was always seasoned from heaven. And so when the word of God comes comes forth, by no means, when you're when you're working on dinner and when you're feeding a a, a people or when when Jesus was feeding his, his 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 people, this is why there's so many parables. He didn't feed the same thing every time. At one time, he talks about a prodigal son coming home. Another time, he talks about how how, how you need to keep oil in your lamp and how you need to keep it full. It it wasn't like he wasn't condoning being, it's okay to be empty. and come. There's all these different seasonings or all these different flavors that make you and I whole and make you and I complete. And when we, when we highlight on one to the disclusion or not even di- exclusion rather, but even uh, downing another, what happened is, is we get off balanced uh, and then the palate is no longer received and um, to the point that, to the point that you, you loo- it's just, it's lost. The message is lost. Uh, and so it's really important that when the word of God comes forth, uh, that we do not stand in the place or in the seat of a critic. That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus hated more than anything else. And that's what he got mad at. It was the Pharisees. Can I tell you there's Pharisees and Sadducees that sit in churches all the time? When they're, 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 the, they're the knowers and the critiquers of the law. Or of a word that comes out. And so, the, and so because of that, you don't receive the potatoes that are being cooked. You don't receive those things. And I don't know about you, but Thanksgiving is so great because it's like, I don't even know what I'm eating at, on Thanksgiving. Because when I put my fork on the plate, it's got some like gravy, stuffing, turkey, ham, jello salad, deviled eggs. I don't know. There's just like stuff. And it's like, it's good. And when I go to the dessert, it's like pecan pie, apple pie, pumpkin pie, whipped cream, ice cream. Come on. 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? And that's what's to be, it's what's to be celebrated. And this is where, even as the body of Christ, so the church, the, is, it's not it, more about the local church than it is about a universal church, because it is the local church that the, the, the universal church finds its identity. But this is why you can't down on a church, because they're a God-given assignment or flavor for this earth. And if all were potatoes, where would be the meat? And if all were meat, where would be the butter? Come on, it's butter. All right, so just this, this understanding, you got to celebrate the sauce. you gotta, you got to rejoice in the diversity of, of God and even in the, his words that do feed us. It, when, if, you, uh, if you're a student of the outdoors or you love, out, out, maybe or even if you're a farmer and you have cattle, you'll recognize that out in the field, uh, especially if, if you lease land or you let ca cattle run in the pasture, there is more than just Bermuda grass out there. And if all the cow got was Bermuda grass, they would be malnourished. They wouldn't have the, the, the certain grasses that are way higher in protein or way higher in, in this mineral or, or different roots tap deeper. Like, like alfalfa will go way down and it'll grab stuff that other things won't. It, 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 there, there's just, but you can't, he can't only eat that because he'll bloat. Right? There's, but they got to have a mix of things. Listen, why do we think that we don't have to have a mix of things when it comes to the Word of God? Anyway, I, I don't know why that was so strong, but that, there it was, all right? And I just, I, I just think it, for the Word of God to work in you and me, we can't, we, we got to be able to taste what's being fed more than we have to say, well, that's not how I would do it. Man, and, and you know, this morning I was just so blessed, just Pastor, Pastor Austin preaching the announcements. I, I was so blessed this morning. We have a team huddle before, like, before the serve team. And Pastor Landon just bringing the word, like, oh, I'm just sitting there going. And it fed me. I just love being fed the word from different places. You know, how do you like going over to somebody's house to have their lasagna? Hint, hint. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right. So we're going uh, we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about preaching Jesus. Everyone everywhere. Now everywhere is a really big word, so is everyone. I really would, would like to include another word in there, and that's every day. But everywhere kind of includes everywhere, all the time, all everywhere. It's not just, it's everywhere, not just in the world, but in your world. In my world, that's when I get up, when I go out, when I, I mean this is, sounds like with my family. It sounds like everyone, every, everywhere. And we're going to talk about this. I'm going to pick up with a statement that Ken Taylor made. He's a missionary that we support uh, in Africa and Haiti and really the French-speaking world. And he was so blessed. I actually just spoke with him um, yesterday, the day before yesterday. Uh, again, uh, he was so blessed by the generosity of this church. And, uh, and, and, and this, is a, it, this is something about this house you might not know. But when, we, when it comes to missionaries, um, we want to sow to them and into what they're doing. But we also want to sow into them personally. Um, the Bible talks about refreshing others uh, so that they can bring refreshing right and so that's one of the one of the the, the hearts and the uh, the strategies um, I believe the Lord has has led this church and some people are like well what are you what is that dollar going to how many wells are you building you know you know isn't that kind of disgusting sometimes when you question what somebody that's on the go they said yes and they left everything to go and then you're like well I've given ten dollars but I want to make sure that that goes to uh, to those people over there well, honey, if the, if, if, okay. <laughs> but he said this, and, and I thought it was so good. And, and <clears throat> last week's message, actually, we, we met at El Trio at like 8.30 at night, like right before it closed. Um, he, they were coming down from uh, Missouri, and, and they wanted to get a bite to eat, and then they got caught in traffic and rain and accidents, and it ended up being two hours later than originally planned, but they said, we still would love to meet. We haven't got to uh, connect, and, and so we just uh, small talked for a little bit, and he asked if there was anything in particular that I wanted to share. I said, man, I just want you to share from your heart. He said, was well, there anything that, I said, well, right now we're just talking about Jesus, preaching Jesus, uh, everyone in the house, every person. And, and everywhere in the world. And I thought that would be perfect for you because you're, you know, going into all the world. And he said, okay, great. And he took time. And this, it actually super blessed me because uh, he could have taught anything. But he took time to say, Lord, what do you say? What are you saying for this house? And what does it mean to go everywhere in the world? 
And he made this statement that was really, really special, and that is this, life is too short and eternity is too long not to do the will of God. Life is too short and eternity is too long not to do the will of God. And I, I want to talk about everywhere this morning, and I, I want to... Um, I want, I want to add, there, there's just this idea that it ha, and I wouldn't even say idea, I would say it's kind of like this, just that smell that gets on you because of culture. Um, and that is that uh, Christianity has become more event than it, ha, than it is lifestyle. And we're talking about everywhere. We're talking about while I'm in the drive through I'm a Christian. While I'm at a ball game, I'm a Christian. I'm talking to myself. While I'm waiting in Lowe's for somebody to get something off the pallet off the top shelf, and I've been there for 45 minutes, and I would like to just climb the shelf myself. I'm a Christian. Who I am, who you are, who we are, is to govern what we do. But when Christianity becomes more event driven, then I become a Christian at a place instead of everywhere. And so I come to church because that's where I'm a Christian. We come, and it's optional, and I'll, I'll be a Christian there. And here's, here's this, it's so, it's so subtle. It's so subtle. Um, have, you asked, have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? I did. We, we say things like, I did. Yeah, I did that. Done. Check. Instead of I do. I do. I do make Jesus the Lord of my life. Oh, today we're going we're gonna to baptize people, uh, which is the outward declaration. They're say, directing and declaring to others uh, uh, their identity with Christ. And, and ultimately, they're, they're directed in this body that I was death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, and yet res- raised to new life in Christ. And we say things like this. Have you been baptized? And you would say, I, yeah, I was baptized. Instead of, I am baptized. There's, there's a difference there. And you're like, oh, we're splitting hairs. I'm not talking about language as much as I am talking about mentality. Well, I was baptized. No, no, no. I am baptized. What does that mean? It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives within me. So there's a difference in my approach to, to my tomorrow. There's a difference in my approach in the drive through There's a difference in my approach to the waiter or the waitress when I ask for lemon in my water. There goes your 10%. 10%? Say home. Stay home. If you can't be generous, stay home. Because he tells us we're to look like our father. You know, generosity is one of the greatest. It's, it's one of the great. When, we look, when we're generous, that's when we look most like our heavenly father. When we're generous. Generous is not the my old shoes. I, I was watching. The, 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 now, now I want you to. I'm not gonna. I was watching this uh, this YouTube for, of um, Duck Dynasty. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Use it. I wasn't gonna say it, but I'm gonna use it. Um, and so uh, my son Caleb, he just likes outdoor stuff, and he just thinks the, these guys on Duck Dynasty are funny. And we know Duck Dynasty is like a thing of ten years ago, right? Um, but so there was this, this, this episode that was 10 years ago, and they had a toy drive at the local church. And so they were saying, let's bring the toys. Bring your, and here was the statement. So we're having a toy drive, and, and the church just said, bring your old toys and the stuff you don't use anymore, and we're going to be a blessing. And so they were going through all their, their old toys and their toy boxes and stuff that they don't use anymore, and we're going to be a blessing. Can I tell you, the shoes that you wore are not the blessing? It's the shoes in the box that are the blessing. we got to learn to change the way that we give because everyone, every, everywhere I go, I am, whether I realize it or not, I am a witness, I am a voice, I am a testimony of who God is. And the Bible talks about how your and my good works would cause men to glorify Him in heaven. What you and I do matters more than what we say. 
And so let your light shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Can I tell you, Jesus' greatest testimony was not his words. It was his works. It wasn't just what he said. It's that, like Paul said, my, I'll, you talk about your faith, but I'll show you my faith with my works because faith without works is, is dead. It, it, it has no life. And you know what people are looking for is they're looking for a real gospel, a real good news that is strong enough to, to move you and me and, and to, 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 uh, to direct our days, to direct our steps, to tell us when to get up and when to sit down and how to go in and how to go out. Our how, it, it matters. It matters. And so we're, we're, we're picking up uh, from, from, again, having uh, being a, not a I did, but a I do, not a I was, but I am, and not event Christianity, uh, but lifestyle Christianity. What does it look like to follow Christ? Uh, and just that we become more aware of our witness. Have you ever done this? Because I've done this, maybe. Uh, uh, have you ever felt like I ruined my witness? And, you know, some of you are like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm talking about when what I say I am, I didn't look like, I didn't smell like, I didn't taste like what I said. <laughs> and so I feel like a complete hypocrite. And then the message that I'm supposed to carry, ah, yeah, just, you know, just, 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 let's just do this. Hide it. You know what we should do? We'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll just get it under a bushel. That's what, that, because that, that's what, and, and the reality is that's what is happening in a lot of the church. There's a lot of lights, but there's just a lot of bushels. And so it's kind of like when you're laying in bed at night and you want to read, but your wife wants to go to bed. And so what do you do? You get the covers and you have the light and you make the tent so they can go to, in other words, you make the light so it's just for yourself. My, my wife, she, this is funny, she, she doesn't really like me in the morning. Um... <laughs> Until she gets out of bed. And here's why I say that. I, she loves me all the time. But, but in the morning, here's what she says. Why do you have to turn on every light? Because I don't want to stub my toe on the vacuum that you left right there. <laughs> Lifestyle Christianity. Might be ruining my witness. No. <laughs> I'm just te teasing, but she, she says, do you have to turn on every light? So this is, I like light in the morning when it's time to get up. I'm just like, turn them on, baby. And, and so other people like, turn on the low lights and let me just get my coffee. And, and I'm just like, we're up. And I remember hating that with my mom. She would come and she'd wake us up and she goes, good morning, good morning, good morning. And she'd rip the covers off and turn on the lights. And I, as a teenager, I'm like, I'm really wanting to actually cuss my mom right now that's how, like I was there's nothing that makes you matter than in the morning when you're asleep and everything was good and then somebody just comes and starts jumping on the bed flips the lights on and even though you didn't even know that you like something inside of you awakens right <laughs> and now I'm kind of that guy when I'm a parent I'm never gonna well it's happening um so my witness, my life is testifying continually. I don't know how we got off onto the light thing. Um, I'm going to get off of that one there. But, um, huh? Oh, yeah, hiding it under a bushel. And that's how, that's how we, a lot of times we're living. We're just, it's, it's our light. It's a private light. I got a private light. You got a private light. But that's not what the Lord says about your light. He says, so let your light shine. Before men. <clears throat> First Corinthians ten thirty one. We're going to talk about every, everywhere in your my world. Sometimes we get caught in the weeds on the how to, and all of what exactly I am to do, instead of just living for with this thermometer and just this test. And that's First Corinthians ten thirty one. Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, you do it all for the glory of God. Am I, and here's a really simple question: Everywhere in my life, are you getting glory here? It could be uh, on, on the job, how I work. Can I tell you, if you, if you work for the glory of God, what's going to happen is you're going to grow in favor with man. When you put your hand to for God, 
And you're like, oh. And, and you might be cooking, and you're like, you know. All right, you don't know. Um, but you might be cooking, and, and, you're, and you, you, you didn't just slop it on the plate. You, you, for the glory of God. There's something that happens when you understand who it's for. And it brings order to your and my life when we, do, when we simply understand, uh, again, what, how, do, how do I live? How do I play on the football field? Well, you knock them down in the name of Jesus and help them up. In other words, I don't have to be a punk while I play. But I, but I am to give my all. Like, you're not always going to win. You're not always going to win, but you should always give your all. Why? Because of who you're playing for. You to express it for everything you got, right? This is important, all right? So, um, but so uh, picking back up with where Ken, Brother Ken left off, he talked about five things uh, of, you know, taking the message of Jesus, preaching everywhere, everyone, everywhere in the world. And these were, he talked about arming yourself with resolve to do the will of God. He talked about being on the lookout, watchful to share and pray, and pray for people, Lord, give me an opportunity to share. He talked about committing yourself to walk in love, and then he talked about this, refusing to grumble, and, and then serve for the glory of God. That's so awesome. And where the Lord highlighted to me, he kind of picked up on some things, a little bit along long lines, what I was going to share on, but it was the grumbling, the grumbling. And so, uh, but it was a completely different way. And so this is what we're going to look at this morning. First uh, Peter chapter four verse three it says um, it says this you spend enough this is out of the God, God, God's word translation uh, you might have it in the NLT why don't we read it this way first you have you have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy he's talking about you are my life and this is where he pulled uh, brother Ken pulled all of his his message for First Peter chapter four he said you've had enough. It's been enough of the past, of the evil things that godless people enjoy. Their immorality and lust, their feasting, drunkenness, wild parties. And, and he talks about, now it's time for you to live for God. This is what this passage, he said, you've had enough of that. This is not out of the God's word translation. You spent enough time in the past doing what unbelievers like to do. In other words, you, we, we've spent enough time doing that. He said, it's, it's time to do something different. It's time to imitate Christ. This is Ephesians 5. It's time to, to imitate God. It's time to be a light here in this world. And, and, and we're going to look at this. Matthew chapter 5, 13 through 16. He says this, that you're the salt of the earth. You know, you, once you add salt to something, it's hard to get it out. It, it's, hard, it's hard to get it out. It goes everywhere. It gets in the whole dish, doesn't it? That's what he says, that you're in my life, the message that we come on, it, it's to go everywhere. It's to go through the entire dish. It's to go through the entire life, my entire world. And he, he says, but, you're the, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. One of the, a lot of translations say trampled underfoot by men. Can I tell you, when the salt is only in the house and not everywhere in our world, can I tell you your message will be stood on by men? You'll be walked on. Can I tell you that when your conviction does not drive your decisions of your day-to-day, -day, then others will make decisions for you. Can I tell you, when, if your conviction is this is what we're going to do under the Lord and we're not playing and doing this on Sunday, then guess what? If that's your conviction and that's driving your life, uh, there won't be games on Sundays. Or there won't be games. If your conviction... Like what is your, our conviction is to drive our lives. It's to drive our decision. It's to drive our do. We're not to be I was a baptized. It's a I am. And so identity is huge. Who I am and who I carry because it, it's from that place that my witness goes forth. Okay? And so he goes on to say this in verse 14. He says, "You are the light of the world. A town built or a city built on a hill cannot be hidden." Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. <clears throat> so understanding this, that the, the message of God was not communicated to you merely for yourself. This is important for us to understand. Christ finding you was not just to find you. It was to find, so that you could find others. Okay, 
So now, this, there's that passage, and we're going to, uh, we have two other scriptures this morning that we're going to go to, two passages, and then we're going to kind of cl- wrap this up to bring this to a close. It's, I'm not ready to close, but these two passages. Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 15. And this is going to get us to that grumbling or that complaining portion. Philippians 2, chapter 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence. How many of you know that that's, that matters? So let's just go to this. As you have always obeyed in my presence, but also now in my absence. Hey, everything's good because dad's there. Everything's good because mom's there. We're not talking about this because pastor's there. We're not doing this because teacher's in the hallway. And like In other words, he's saying, he said, I, I know you obey in my presence. I, I, I know at church we don't do this. But after church, this matters. He says, uh, therefore, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but, but now, much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, there is an outworking of what's on the inside. There is to be an outworking of what's on the inside. Fear and trembling. For it is God, and this is huge for us to understand, for it is God who is at work in you. No, so he's not saying, like, give. Like, he's not, re- he, he's, not, he's not making me, hey, Jesus loves you. No, he's at work within me. So what does that look like? Kyle, I want you to. I want you to go over to that person and find out what's going on. Uh, well, you know, I'm just sitting down with, with my family. I got this going on. and you know, um, But he's at work within you to will and to do. But what's also at work on you, we're going to look at, is this argument. There's an argument going on continually with you and me. Can I tell you, Adam and Eve are not the only ones that when the Lord had spoke something that heard, did God really say? Do you really want to do that? Is that what you really want? Does it really look, does it really matter that much? If you don't, or if you do, or if you always, come on, it's not that big a deal. And so this is what's happening. And this is this passage. So many times we think of the, the do everything without complaining and grumbling. It's not talking about you and me complaining to one another. It's talking about when the Lord is at work within you. Look, at, here's what he says. He, he tells us. He says, um, go back to Philippians 2, uh, he, uh, verse 12. Philippians 2, 12. Therefore, my, brother, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed in my absence, not only in my presence, but now in my absence... How much more in my absence? Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Reverential awe and like, a, like this trembling to continue let the salvation of what's been done on the inside and how you've been made new to life in Christ. You've been born again. Your spirit's made new. Let that come on to the outside. Because God is at work in you. He's at work in you. And you know how God works? He works with his word. He works in your and my life with his word. He'll bring a direction to your life. Like, hey, you should go to church Wednesday night. Hey, you know, Pastor Landon was, or Pastor Austin was talking about going tonight a prayer. And, and it's one Tuesday night a month. I really would like you to be there. But this is the Lord talking to you. Not, not Austin, but the Lord's talking to you. But you're like, yeah, but that's the night that that one shows on. So there's an argument. But, or, but more or even that, there's a grumbling. There's a whispering. Oh, it's kind of like this whispering, like when you ask, maybe you've asked your kids, or maybe you've asked somebody, can you take out the trash? It's like, I'm always not doing this. What did you say? Nothing. Okay, great. Grab that. Thank you. <laughs> can you imagine? Can you imagine if God was more like our parent in some, in some regards? This is why the Bible, this is the foundation of Christianity is really found in the home. Children, obey your father and mother in the Lord for this is right. This is the first commandment with promise and so it will go well with you. 
See, because if I can't obey my mom and dad, not just obey, it says honor thy father and mother. If their word can't be higher than mine, how do I know if their word's higher than mine? My murmur. And if the garbage being taken out is a deal to me, and I'm talking, it doesn't say honor your children, fathers, or children, honor your father and mother until you're 18. But if I can honor, if I can honor, if I can hold in esteem who God chose to put me under, can I remind us that we didn't choose our parents, that they didn't choose us. And sometimes parents are very aware that they didn't choose you. It was the Lord. (laughs) But sometimes, can I tell you, teenagers feel the exact same way? But the command is to to the children, honor your father and mother, because then it'll go well with you. Because what's actually happening is, is we're learning to yield to a word without questioning. That's what's happening. To yield to the word of the Lord without questioning, without an argument. So Philippians 2 verse 13, for it is God who's at work. Where is he at work? On the inside. He's at work in you to will and to do. He's extending to you and me his word or his will. And, and, and so many times we're like, well, I, I hear people say, oh, I don't hear from God. Um, you heard from God when he gave a direction to you and you argued back. Did you hear what I said? How many of you ever said that to your kid? Did you hear what I said? And they would say, no, but, but they, they whispered, mumbled back, so they heard something. It's a lie to say as a child of God, or for you and I to stand in the seat of pride and say that as a child of God, if you're born again and Jesus is your Lord, not was your Lord, but is your Lord, you hear his voice as a child of God, you know his voice, and as strangers you don't follow. Another, that He says this is the truth. So for you and I to identify with something else is a lie. And the reality is you're, you can lie to your heart, But your heart won't lie to you. The Bible says it's the spirit of man that is the candle of the Lord. It's how he leads you. It searches all the inward parts of the belly. In other words, he's leading you from the inside out. He not only looks at the heart, but he leads with the heart. In the middle of the heart is there's this ear, H-E-A-R-T. And that's how he leads us. And so we'll hear from him all the time, and it's a direction, it's a, it's a will, it's a, this is my will for you, to will and to act according, or to fulfill what? His purpose. Did you know, in this, in, on this earth, while we're here, did you know, you're every day, you're everyone, every, every person here, everywhere you go, God has a purpose for that day. God has a purpose and a plan, and that would be that you're, you and me would witness or testify of his goodness and of his mercy and of his kindness and of his judgment. And we were ta- Remember we were talking about cooking? you got to have it all. you got to have it all. Okay? So he goes on to say this. So um, <laughs> you... Uh, Really, this explains how salvation is worked out through fear and trembling. It's yielding to God's will. This is where he's at work within you. Now you just yield. But what, how do we not yield? We argue. The very next verse says this. Um, he, he, goes, he, he, he says this. It says, do everything, verse 14, do everything without grumbling. This word grumbling is this. Smoldering discontent, droning on in a low, constant murmur. I really don't want to... So just gotta, gotta go do this. I gotta, 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 I have to, have to, got to, instead of get to. Can I tell you that you can grumble and you complain about the will of God? You've been praying for this job. God gave me this job. And a year in, you gotta go to this stupid job, work, and, no, no, no. and the will of God for your and my life is not being worked out. And we wonder why it's not being worked out because instead of going there with joy, and therefore with joy you carry something, a strength to continue, and that strength to continue allows a promotion to come, and rejoicing and testimony, all these kind of things, it matters. Our murmuring matters. But our murmuring so oftentimes it's not about what's going on in life, it's about what God is saying to you and me. What he's doing or what he, he's directing are in our lives. We murmur. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to church on a Wednesday night. I mean, who even invented that? Like, what in, the, what in the world? Who even invented going? I mean, don't they know it says keep the Sabbath day holy? I mean, the Sabbath's not even Sunday. I mean, I mean even yielding to that, a Sunday. So, you know, it's, don't they know it's Saturday? I mean, come on. 
if we're going to honor the Lord, like, why are we going with the Gregorian calendar? Come on. Let me. I was like, okay, let's go back to Jude. <laughs> okay. If that's the case, bring your dill and your mint. Your herbs. You're not growing any? Well, you should grow some because you're supposed to be bringing the tithe of that. All right. Do everything without grumbling, smoldering discontent, droning on in a low, constant murmur. You ever done that with the Lord? Maybe I'm the only one. The Lord asks you to do this. I really don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. All right. here's, here's that 20. Here, here, here here's the 20. Um, we don't want to do this. Keep, keep getting it. All right, I'm going to yield. Here, God loves you. I obeyed. I was faithful. You missed it, didn't you? My murmuring. So, because here's what's crazy, is when I start talking, this low hum drone, you know, like, they're still talking. But the, but the, the, the direction was coming, and it was a more of a complete what was going to happen, but I'm missing it. Have you ever realized that to yourself, like, you are a lot louder than you are out here? In you is a lot louder. Your whisper is a lot louder in you than it is out here. And can I tell you that the way that God speaks to you and me is in a whisper? Can I tell you our whispers are drowning out his whisper? When he speaks to you, hey, you need to go to them and you need to let that go. Oh, do they let that go? I'll tell you. Let's go on. Let's go. And we wonder... Why the outworking of salvation isn't happening. Murmur. But he didn't just say murmur. He said do everything. Do what's, what's the everything? Everything. Everything that he tells you to do. Everything that he's working in you to do. Do that without murmuring, but also do it. Do it without reasoning or arguing. So arguing, this word arguing, actually, it's crazy. It's, if you were to look it up, it's dia. Di like diameter, and then logia, and then another ending on this word. This is Greek, right? So, like, all the way thought through logically. Arguing. You ever argued with your kids? I'm using this example not because my kids are bad, but because I'm a kid, and it, it, it resonates. Can I tell you, so many times we're teenagers with the God, where we argue, and we have good reason not to. We have good reason not to do what we know in our heart or what he's dealing with is in our heart because I can't see it as being, I can't see that, I can't see that. And can I tell you, your and my sight is so limited, but he sees the end from the beginning. And if you and I would not murmur and you and I would not argue, and this word argue, me define it here out of the Strong's, reasoning that is self-based and therefore confused. Especially as it contributes to reinforcing others in discussion to remain in their initial prejudice. Can I tell you when, 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 when Satan came to tempt Adam and Eve in the garden, it wasn't his first, it wasn't his suggestion that caused them to turn. It was the fact that there was this initial bent that they took. It looks good to me. I mean, we've been tending and weeding and doing all this for how long? I mean, it's got fruit on it, you know. So I had, they had to know about this tree. Here they were. Man, it looks good. Why did they find them? Well, maybe, maybe the weeds were done. Maybe they were just going to look at, God, that looks like good fruit. I don't know why in the world he would tell me to do that. And an argument, an argument came about. And arguments keep us from fulfilling God's will in our life. It, it keeps the witness of him everywhere in this world squashed. It keeps the bushel over the candle. That's what it does. And the candle doesn't go out of the house. Maybe it only comes to a house. And then we go out. And so we're lighting the candle, but we're not lighting even the house. And if we're not lighting a house, we're not lighting a city. Because we look the same as everyone else at the ball game, everywhere. Everywhere. We're not lighting a city. And if we're not lighting a city, we're sure not reaching the world. 
there's a bushel. There's a bushel. There's walls of where God can tell me and what he can do. There's arguments. There's murmurings. And it's keeping the will of God in my life. And the will of God, which is good, it's not only keeping me from walking in it. Again, he found me, not just for me, but so that I could find others. My life is not the testimony it's supposed to be because I'm not partnered with his will. He's at work within me to will and to do according to his good pleasure. He's working in you. He's speaking to your heart about things. He, and and you, you, here's what we do. It is God all the while who's at work within me. So there's a, there's, he's, he's working in me, but he would like to work it out of me through what? Me yielding through fear and trembling and not arguing with what he's his word. But coming under his word so that grace could flow. Okay? Verse 15. Do everything, or verse 14. Do everything without uh, grumbling or arguing so that. So that what? So that you would become blameless and pure. Wow, you would look just like him. You would look just like Christ. But then also, something else would happen. You would shine. A message would come forth from you and me. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about final authority. This, can I tell you, this applies to everywhere in your world. If it's not everywhere in your world, it won't go everywhere in the world. It's got to be everywhere in your, in your or my world. It's got, it's got to be. That we would become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Well, the, well the, I don't understand why we have to do that. They don't have to do that. I, I know that, that that board is warped and crooked. Like, I don't understand why, why we have to be straight. And they look at all of those other boards are like this. I'm building the, our house, and we got a, a package of lumber. It's terrible. When they unclipped it, it just went, Wurr! and there was very few boards that were straight. We had to send almost all of it back when, once it came unbundled. And, you know, we didn't go, well, how can we, why can't you be like that? That's warped and crooked. It's not right. Can I tell you we shouldn't look like the world? Can I tell you my family shouldn't look like the world? Can I tell you my conviction shouldn't look like the world? Can I tell you if it does, then I've lost the savor? I've lost the salt? And, and if I've lost that salt, if I look like them, well, then they can walk on my conviction until my conviction is no more. And, and this is where we yield, and we, we, the yielding is the fading, and it's, there's this like slow fade until we no longer have the influence, we no longer carry the light, except to an event, except to a church, or to somebody's small group Bible study, or, or whatever, a coffee shop where we sit with two people and, and drink a coffee and talk about what's wrong in the world, but thank God. Thank you, Lord. He says, it, 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 so that you will become famous and pure, children of God without fault in the warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. We know we've all done this, uh, and we, the, we, where the Lord comes to us, and we hear what we say. I don't want to, or has God said. This is, this is the two things that we talked about. I don't want to, or has God said. Where is, where is your I don't want to, and where is your questioning of did God really say? Can I tell you, he still whispers the same thing. Did God really say you should go? I mean, it's really not that big a deal. God just, I mean, what, really the reality is God knows that when you eat of that tree, then that day you'll be just like him and your eyes will be opened. I mean, it's really not that big a deal. Where is, those two things, I, where is your I don't want to? And where is your has God said? The argument, the still, the whisper the reluctant will, and here's what's crazy. A reluctant will is clever, very clever. It's clever to uh, make excuses. Clever excuses. Honest excuses. Which is an allowance to not do. A reluctant will will make clever excuses. Hey, you know, I w isn't there a parable about this? Hey, I was going to be there. But I just got married, and you understand, you know, if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Got to keep her happy, you know what I'm saying? Plus, if we just got married, hey. It's a good excuse. It's an honest excuse. It's a clever excuse, but it's the wrong priority. 
And the will of the Lord came and worked to you. Hey, I, I, here's an invitation. I want you to be here. Well, you know, I just bought this land, and, and you know, I never get to go, and I'm always doing this, and the Lord would really like, you know, to refresh. You know, he talks about he'll bring refreshing those who refresh others, and I've really been refreshing others, and, and so I believe the Lord just really want me to re be refreshed at this time. And if you, you believe that because of your argument, you believe that because of your reluctant will. And the reality is you don't believe that. You are just justifying your move. And the longer we justify our move, the harder, the harder our heart or our conscience becomes. Until we no longer recognize Him working in me, Him working in you to will and to do. Can I tell you, there's no word of God that's spoken to your heart that doesn't also carry the power to do it. You can do all things through Christ. He's working in you, who strengthens you. I mean, we're using scripture here. This is good, isn't it? All right, and then the last passage, Ephesians chapter 5, and these are just three things. How to allow you and me to take him everywhere. Uh, so again, where, where, where in my life is the, is the I don't want to, and where in the life is the has God said? You might write those two things down, and you might maybe just, where in my life is I don't want to, and where in my life is has God said? Because that right there is keys to salvation being outworked in your life, and your light shining so others can see. The cool thing is, so many times we want to drink, or we want to refresh, but like, our drink or our refreshing, like it refreshes others, but so I'm also refreshed. Like what you and I want, we want what God wants for our lives. Okay? And so Ephesians chapter 5, this is, um, it says this. It this is just talking about being an imitator of God as dear children. This is what's so cool. It's really so basic. And this is the first commandment with a promise. So he talks about children Obey your fathers and mother. Honor thy father and mother. It is the first commandment. So it's, 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 this is so childish. It, or not just childish as in like, but it's so simple and so basic. And it's this. Just imitate. Just imitate. Imitate your father. And he says this. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. And here's the first one. There's three things that if we would just put these things into play uh, in our lives, we would watch the will of God. We would watch everywhere, a witness everywhere. And that is this, walk in love, verse 2. And walk in love as Christ also loved us. And so to walk in love, this is the key, as Christ has given himself for us. So walk in love, but here's how you walk in love. Remember, remember God's love for you. This is so key to walk in love. i got to remember, if I'm going to imitate him, I'm going to have to first remember his love for me. So many times I struggle to walk in love and to be patient and to be kind and to be like these things because I don't remember how patient and how kind and how forgiving and how believing the best God was of me even though I said I wasn't going to do it and here I am again and again and again and I'm holding somebody that you said that last time and here you are again and you deserve this and I forget, I forget that the love of God and even even if I've grown in my relationship with him and, and, and the outworking of salvation is, is seen in a brighter display than somebody else, can I tell you that outworking of love for him was because he loved you, not because you're so great? But sometimes once we get up to this certain place, we like, well, y'all need to be holy like I'm holy. Be holy as I'm holy. Is there a scripture for that? Oh, it was as he's holy. That's right. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us. And it goes on to talk. And then you could jump down to first, uh, uh, verse 8. And then it's walk in light. So you walk in love by, by remembering how much he's loved you. And really this whole chapter, Ephesians 5, is so good. But the next one is to walk in light. So if we're going to carry, again, Jesus, every, every one, every one of us, everywhere, we're going to have to walk in love. We're going to have, we're going to, have to first of all, uh, let God work in us. Now stop saying, I don't want to. I don't want to. Stop arguing. And instead, remember, 
and walk in love. Remember how much he loved us. Walk in light. What is light? Let's see here. For you were once in darkness, verse 8, but now you're in the light, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Find out what is the acceptable, what is acceptable to the Lord. This is how, this is light right here. You, you, light is finding out what's acceptable to the Lord. Light comes. His word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. His word is light. We see this all through the Bible. We fi- to walk in light, I'm going to have to find out what's acceptable to God. So I don't, I don't approach a decision at work and say, well, they did it, so I can do it. It's not, if they did it, I can do it, and that's cool. You know, uh, well, you know, everybody gives their friends free food. Okay, but that's somebody's free food. No, it wasn't. It's costing somebody something. Can I tell you, if you work at a jo- as an employee at a place, and you're giving away free milkshakes or free cheeseburgers and free this and free that to all your friends or your buddies or whatever, can I tell you you're stealing? That somebody's paying for that? And you thought it was just you being good and being cool, but can I tell you you're being dishonest? This is the word. Find out what God says about it. Is it okay? So this is what I'm talking about. How do I preach Jesus every Find out what he says. Is this okay? No, it's really not okay to take that extra thing from the break room. It's really not okay to take all 12 pens. It's really not okay to dump that whole Halloween candy bucket in your pillowcase and walk off. He says, take one. Well, everyone else is doing it. If I don't do it right now, then somebody else is going to do it behind me. Walk in light. Which means find out what he find out what he says. Like you can't walk in light if you don't know what he's saying. Is this the girl for me? Is this the job for me? Is it find out what he's saying? But then, and, and then once you find out what he's saying, allow that light to shine even in your secrets. Here, let's keep on reading here. It says, find out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful to even speak of those things that are done by them in secret. Can I just say, just let it into the secret parts? If you and I would let the light into the secret, we would, we would have a whole lot less secrets. Can you just, it, it, you know, one of the ways to, to walk in light is just to be real? Just Bro, I missed it. I, I, I lost it. And I, I, I just, that wasn't right. I apologize. I repent. That's big. All right. And the last one is this. If you'll move down to uh, verse uh, 16. See that you walk circumspe- circumspectly everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the day, days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Walk in wisdom. So you walk in love, you walk in light, and you walk in wisdom. Walking in wisdom is twofold. It's not just knowing what God says, but it's understanding the time and the timing of what God's told you to do. Wisdom understands timing. Wisdom understands when you're to redeem the time, how you're to buy up the time. He says this, this, do not... See then that you walk circumspectly, not as a fool, but as wise, redeeming the time because the time or the days are evil. Can I tell you, wisdom understands the, the time in which they live and, and the portion when God directs uh, when, when to move. Okay, Lord, if you want me to go after him, do I go now? Like, is this, is it now? Is it, or, or do I, am I to wait? What, what are you saying? And so it causes a conversation and your awareness of the Lord directing your life. Because see, here's the deal. I... I, I, it wasn't that I was baptized, it's that I am baptized. I, I, it's not that I did accept Christ, it's that I have, and He is my Lord and Savior. Like, it's, 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 it's maybe just we're splitting hairs, but we're not, because we're talking about a lifestyle of Christianity everywhere, and you're in my life. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And can I tell you, um, can I tell you that th- this is so key for you and me, just... Uh, to carry Jesus everywhere is going back to that Philippians chapter 2. That when God's at work within you, can I tell you when he, He's at work within you to walk in love? Can I tell you He's at work within you to walk in light? Can I tell you that He's at work within you to walk in wisdom? All the while, it, it's a whole lot simpler than we made it to preach a message of Jesus. Everyone here, everywhere in this world, and that goes back to you, you're in my heart and not arguing, 
not arguing, or not grumbling, I don't want to, and not arguing, I got a reason why, I got an excuse, I got a better way. And if we would come under God's word, I'm telling you, light would shine forth for you and for them. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness, for coming to us to teach us, to show us uh, in our lives what adjustments we need to make. Show us, Lord, uh, where we're complaining, where we're saying, I don't want to. Lord, show us. Show us where we're arguing with you. And you said that you are the one that's at work within us to give us the will or the grace, the ability to yield. And so today we just come under your word. We, we just say, I, I, I'm not a Christian on Sunday and not on Monday. I'm yours 24-7. I'm yours every day. And I choose your will above my own. I choose your will. Maybe you'd say that. I choose your will above my own. Lead me as your child into all the plans that you have for me. Show me how to rest with you. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, there's rest that comes when you know the Lord just directing your every step. He's like, hey, I want you over here. He's, he's prepared good things in for you in advance to walk in. Uh, he, he knows your end from the beginning. It, there's a rest when we just come under his will. Amen. Amen. Well, we get to uh, we get to see a bunch of people declare Jesus as Lord this morning uh, through baptism. Glory to God. It's so exciting. Um, you know, and, and this is what we're saying. We're saying, I am baptized. I am a believer. I am a Christ follower. And, uh, and so as they go, uh, go to get ready um, and do that, I, I, I want to I give an invitation. If that's you this morning, you're like, you might be saying, I need to give my life to Christ. You might have given your life to Christ. There's, a, there's a, maybe a couple accounts here, but really what I felt strong and impressed in my heart is this, that it's time for me, you would say, it's time for me to not have been a Christian or not to just to live differently. And, and instead of saying I was, I would say I am. I am. Everywhere I am. I'm carrying the message. And, and, and so if that's you this morning, you're just saying that I I. I need to make a move, and I need to tell my body. God's working, and here's the thing. He's working in your heart right now. Like what I'm sharing with you, you, you when I said you, you got to make a move from I was to I am, the Lord's at work within you, and he's saying, that's you. I want you to, I want you to raise your hand there. I want you to make a move. You're like, well, yeah, well, I'm Christian, and everyone knows that. I've been that for a long time. But he's working in you. He's speaking in, into your heart. When the Lord is drawing you in a service, whether you move on that, because your move on that is your partner with Him so that He can have His will in your life. Can I tell you, sometimes it's just us yielding to the will of God that allows our children or our grandchildren or somebody else to move to His will. Can I tell you, so many times we're so short-sighted on what God's doing, and He's working over here while He's working in here, but He's wanting to work here, but you're allowing Him to work here, allows Him to work here. Thank you, Lord. And so if that's you this morning, where you just would say, uh, I need to move from I was to I am or I did to I do, I want you just to stand up for the Lord this morning and just say, Lord... I, I'm, I want to become a I am Christian. I want to I want to be an I do, and I want to yield to you. I want to yield to you. I'm making a declaration this morning as I stand to my feet that I am and I will be an I am Christian. That I'll carry you everywhere that I go. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this man standing. Thank you. 
God bless you. God bless you. Man. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm standing. I'm standing. Culture's gotten too strong in the church. The culture of the world. When the call of God comes and the reasons of the world are greater. Sir, if you'll pray this prayer with me. And anybody else that stood, if you'll pray this prayer with me. This is a, my prayer. Thank you for your standing. Thank you for standing as a couple. Just pray this with me. Say, Father, I'm yielding my body, my entire life to you, to your service, with boldness to stand for you as I walk outside these walls. Strengthen me. Speak clearly to my heart so that I would know to do your will. That I would be in the right place, yielded to your word every time. Lord, I say, I am yours today, tomorrow, for eternity. I am yours to command. In Jesus' name. Well, you guys come on forward or you're getting baptized and Pastor Austin, you, where are you at? He's got the mic and he's walking this way. 20 people for sure. If you want to get born again as well, you can or de de declare Jesus as Lord. You can come too. We got towels and stuff like that. Um, but man, what a, what a day. What a testimony. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's like kicking the devil in the teeth.